Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Keep It Moving Podcast. I am your host, Novelty, and as always, I got with me today, Mike B. What it do? What's going on? <laughs> What's up? I actually feel better today. You been sick? I was sick the last time we did a show, uh-huh. and I've been like well, I mean, kind of- that was a while ago. It was two weeks ago, but I've been sick ever since then. I still got- really? Oh, yeah, yeah. You got cooties too? Ooh. Look Everybody who's talking. <laughs> Look who's talking. You like no two cooties. years from having worms. So <laughs> two years from having worms. <laughs> you know you reach a certain age. Y'all have you just worms. automatically get worms. <laughs> uh, no. I do not have worms nowhere near it. No. I've not been sick in a while. Although, you you had a call for like seven years. <laughs> what are you talking that about? That turned out to be asthma, not uh, sick. Number one. Okay. Seven year cough. It though. started <laughs> it's well, it started from a cold. And then it turned into asthma. Somehow. Because it never went away. No, I'm not. I've not had a cold. Although I, I will say, I, I'm saying cough for seven years. I have minimum. what is called cough variant asthma. It is. I feel like they made that up in the doctor's office that day. No, look it up <laughs> online. It is asthma that is a form of asthma where you constantly cough. Okay. And it falls in line with asthma because when you're coughing, you cannot breathe. Right. It is a respiratory condition. Look it up. I, no, so, I believe. Anywho. I, I also believe they made it up that day. What? And it just happens to be something <laughs> anyway. that they could attribute to other people. Anyway. They probably, but, they probably call it the your real name. They, I'm anywho. sure you got credit for it. Anywho, it's cough variant asthma. Bottom line, and my name is not cough variant <laughs> or asthma. So, uh, but um, so um, I had um, I start I had fe- been feeling like my cough was coming back stronger, and I was taking my meds, and it was coming back. I mean, I was back on my inhaler, which I hadn't used my inhaler for three or four years now. I'm back on my inhaler, and I'm in I'm taking it every. Every hour, every two hours, I'm using my inhaler, which mm-hmm. is not normal. Right. Especially considering I hadn't been using it for years. Oh, wow. yeah. I'm all, all of a sudden using it constantly. And I ended up having to go get some hauls. Cough it, drops? Yes. It had gotten so bad. I had to go get hauls. I had to make the cough stop because I couldn't do anything. I was just constantly coughing. Um, so I mentioned it to my doctor. And I'm thinking I may have caught a cold. And didn't realize I had a cold. A, a real cold. Yeah, because okay. I cough anyway. I didn't realize I had a cold and I never treated the cold. But I never had a fever or anything else to go with it. Just a consistent cough. Mm-hmm. And um, I took some hauls. I did start to finally take some cough syrup. And it finally started to go away. So mm-hmm. now I'm back to, I finally went on and put my extra inhaler back up where it was. And put the other ones in my purse and <laughs> moved on about my life. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I hadn't used ha- inhale, and I'm hoping and praying the whole time that these inhalers still work because I hadn't used them in about a year. It's just dust come out where you spread it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're really choking and coughing. <clears throat> uh, I went on every now and then, and I, some people might find this weird, but every now and then I like I t- try to treat myself. And since I'm kind of getting over my sickness, I'm, I was feeling good today. I decided to. I got up early, like nine thirty. Uh, did some things around the house, you know, showered and all that. I said, I'm going to treat myself today. To what? I went and got me some Long John Silvers because it, it, there's only like two or three in the city. Right. And so, and it's it's not really that close to me, so you I have to make a day away. out of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I get up, I, I go out there, I sit down and I eat in the restaurant, enjoy myself. I get what I want, mm-hmm. you know. And like then you wouldn't I, anyway. <laughs> you ain't got no wife. <laughs> <laughs> nobody telling me not to right. um and so you know i had me some long john silvers i treated myself to a movie you know i what went you to see? see i went to see us oh was it good yeah it was good i want to see it but i'm one of those people that'll be in your lap so uh, i figure it's... i better wait until i can watch it on tv at home at six seven eight o'clock in the morning on a saturday six seven six okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's it was good to me. I know uh, I've been seeing on like uh, social media a lot of mixed reviews. I enjoyed it. It's very very jumpy. I wouldn't consider it like a horror movie. It was like very suspenseful and like a thriller. Mm-hmm. And it was I en- it was good. I think Lupita though. I feel like her and the the young lady that was uh, her daughter in the show, both of them did a great job. Lupita playing uh, both both parts. You know, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but I feel like she acted her ass off. Like I was, I was impressed. You know, I, I saw her in 
uh, Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I don't know too many other movies I've seen her in that I could she won recall. An Oscar for something. What she won her Oscar for? I can't remember. But she won an Oscar. I I can see why. But she I thought she did an excellent job in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's worth watching the movie just to see her, you know, kind of play herself <laughs> or play against herself in this film. It was a really good movie. Oh, I'm loving his movie. His movie. Jordan Peele. Yes, his movies are. I like the fact that they are unapologetically black. Mm-hmm. That's what <laughs> I like about it. And he said they was always going to be that way. Uh, there was a moment where they, were, uh, you know, they were playing. They were calling the police, or they told like their version on the show of Siri to call the police. It wasn't Siri or Alexa, but it was called something else. Mm-hmm. They said call the police because they needed some help. And instead of calling the police, she was like, okay. And she played F the Police by NWA. <laughs> and I'm looking around seeing all these white people kind of like clutch their invisible pearls, like feeling some type of way. Uh, because, I mean, it was totally unedited version. It oh, wow. it was unapologetically black. Yes. And I was, <laughs> I was sitting over there laughing my ass off. It was a good movie. So, so yeah, it was, a good, it was a good day. Good. So you should you should definitely go see it in the theater. I, want, I would love to go see it in the theater. I'm tempted to just buy a ticket to support it, right? But I know me, I'm gonna be in somebody's you can go lap. in the uh, daytime. It, it was like two o'clock when I went. It's still dark in the theater. Oh, true. So I know me. I end up in some white person's lap, and they be like, "Hey, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> party time!" So um, I'm just gonna. Um, I may buy a ticket just to support. But I am more than likely going to wait until I can watch it on a Saturday morning. And it has to be early in the morning because whatever residuals it leaves cannot be there when I go to bed. Well, you know, you always got your Scooby-Doo backup. Yeah, but sometimes Scooby-Doo don't be doing it. It's not enough. Uh, (laughs) And I feel like because this was the second week for, it, you know, opening week. I feel like it broke a record. It did. For being like uh, the the highest grossing horror film or something like that. It did. Uh, If I I I don't remember what the record was, but it did break one. I had to look it up. It's right one of on. those two two things we had to let you know in the credits. In, oh, description. In the description okay. to <laughs> right somewhere in there. Just, because I don't remember. But yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Cool. But if you guys haven't seen it, if you're on the fence about seeing it, go check it out. It was it was still funny, too. You know, it was a lot of humorous uh, moments. But again, I enjoyed Lupita. I enjoyed the, the young girl because... She was one of those people, the young girl, she was one of those people that Lupita said, hey, do this. She was like, she was gone because some shit ain't right. I ain't, I ain't no questions. <laughs> like she Real was, black people uh, yeah. in a horror movie. <laughs> yes. We ain't sticking around. You know, the, the father, he was like, uh, this is not what it really is. He's all being all hesitant and questioning. See the daughter was like, hey, some shit ain't right. Mama said, Mama go, said yeah. I'm going. <laughs> and I, I appreciated that. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm glad you did some things you liked today. Because you know what I didn't like today? What? I woke up, I rolled over, I looked at my cameras, and I was like, what's that? Oh, the snow? No, I'm not <laughs> seeing that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I opened my door to let my dog out. Even my dog, whose name is Snow, turned around and looked at me like, like oh, uh-uh. hell no. <laughs> the dog didn't sign up for this. I was so surprised that it was it snowed today. And you know what the first thing I thought about? Yo, yo, squirrels, Chip and Dale. I'm like, they were out having a good time the last time we Chip talked. Chip and Dale and Like is two in days ago, house. it was like 60, 70 degrees. You know, it's warm. I wasn't wearing a coat to work. Nope. And then today it's snowing and raining and then mixture of snow and rain. What Chip the hell is that Dale all about? Chip and Dale are in their house wondering what's going on because they don't have enough nuts to hibernate. <laughs> enough what? Nuts to hibernate. Right on. They ain't had nothing to pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. I, they like whoa wait a minute we ain't got no more rations come yeah, on what, what is, is this? going on right it, it it just it blew me away but i had to get up go out do some more little, um house hunting um how's it going you know we're gonna ask you every time how's it going you know me and when i say you know me you know me i'm picky so you know buying a house for me is not gonna be easy and not just for me, but I feel for like. But aren't you getting to like crunch time where you have to like make a decision and no. move out of your old house? No. Oh, so you just keep staying there? I so, could, yeah, if I can keep, I don't. I'm. I'm so they haven't raised no the rent. Reason. They haven't. They've done already anything. done that. I just okay. keep on paying the rent increase okay. until I find what I need to find or what I want to find. And you know, I mean, come on, you know me. I'm picky about the computer software I use. So the, the fact that you keep making like trinkets at your house, this is still bothering me. Why? You know, making all these different glasses and decorations. I'm saying, but you also still have to move that crap. 
No, well, but see, that's. Are uh, you going to pay somebody to move? Well, well, no, that is um, decorations that I pack up anyway. So no, 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 it's not. It's not. It's decorations that you keep buying and creating more of. But I'm packing it up as soon as it's But it's still more shit to move. Hey, it just got to get moved. How many? I would say since October. No, not even October. uh, September sometime of last year. How many wine glasses and goblets have you created? Let's see. Since September, I made I didn't make any for Christmas. You made some for uh, Halloween. Okay, so you said September, not October. I know, I'm saying, but you, oh, you had to make them ahead of time because okay, they so, had to cure for so long. So you're right. So Halloween, I made six. The um, I made a set that I gave away. Mm-hmm. But then I made six wine glasses and then four. No, I didn't do Halloween mugs. I already had Halloween mugs. So Halloween I did. Uh, I didn't do Christmas. I did Valentine's Day. And I did six six uh wine glasses and then two for the living room i did uh march uh mardi gras uh, you I yeah did, mardi gras uh, you did saint patrick's saint patrick's day you did and easter. Done easter i will do cinco de mayo and i will do uh fourth of july uh, why don't you wait until you move because i might not move this year as picky as come on but it's still this more me. crap that this you got to me. move i told that, you see matter. this I'm this happy. is leading to my conversation of you being a hoarder I'm not a you, hoarder. You're a hoarder of good, nice things. <laughs> <laughs> but hoarders, they I all start not. out at good, nice things. Brand no, they new don't. In the, yeah. No, they don't. They have, <laughs> like, fresh canned goods. They got fresh bikes and, like, everything. It just, because they have it for so long, it gets old and mildewed and rat infested and roach infested, uh, urine infested, anywho, feces infested. My stuff is wrapped in bubble wrap, packed in, a, uh, packed in a nice plastic tub, put away and pulled out every year. And put on display during the holiday. So, anywho, I'm just letting you know ahead of time. I, there might be on the show a hoarder's edition, and it's gonna be video. So you're gonna have to just show your face because I'm <laughs> I, I'm gonna put you out there because anywho. I feel like you won't see it until you see it. I see my house every single day. You don't see the hoarding part of your no, house. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, don't start talking about me hoarding when you hoard toilet uh, uh, th- uh, toothpaste containers. No, I just keep them. <laughs> what, what's that? What's the it's, difference? It's, it's what's different. the difference? Because you never know when you're gonna like run out and you have to squeeze, squeeze, you know, some uh, mm-hmm. toothpaste out of an old container. Mm-hmm. Mine's is for emergencies. Yours is for pleasure. Right. I put it out on display during the holiday, and then I put it up. Mm. Anyway, it's called decorating. Right though. You need a you need a female influence in your life. I would break those glasses after every holiday. I I, I need to start. I think we're gonna have a conversation with your grandma. I'll tell her to come over here and put some curtains up, put a little feminine touch in your house. <laughs> you no, it, it is this is definitely bachelorish. Yeah. Or you know what? <laughs> we don't even have to call your grandmother. You know what? That's what I'm gonna go do next nope, Saturday. We're nope, gonna put nope. some curtains <laughs> nope. up. We're gonna it's put not, some nice nope. posters and pictures on the wall. I you got, know, you, I got, got po- you got posters. We're gonna frame them nicely, hang them back up on the wall. You're gonna get you those are original frames. That's nice artwork on the wall. That don't have a frame around it. Neither does that. It's like three up there that no. don't have a frame around it. One has a frame around it, look like Grandma Josie. Picture, you know what? Let's let's move on. So yeah, uh, <laughs> no, no that, you started this, this conversation. Is not gonna happen. <laughs> you started this. Don't, so yeah, that's don't try to switch do. from decorating we your house you to decorating nice, mine. No, we gonna give you a nice little bachelor pla- pad. Maybe not curtains. I come up with something sleek, but we gonna give you a nice little bachelor pad with some 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 umph to it. Because this is what you got going on: white walls, and that's about it. Yeah, you got to keep them white so you know they're clean, and then you can recognize spiders mm-hmm. and any other insect. Mm, then we can talk about the flow. We talk about the walls right now, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, who you got a bag for me? Uh, I do, and this is—I uh, feel like we may have talked about these two individuals at one point, uh, but I just—I can't get enough of talking about them, and it's more so like uh, Beyonce and Jay Z, and then Rock Nation. And the reason I want to appreciate and celebrate them for Black Achievements and Excellence is the fact that. They consistently do things in the background to help other people that we don't know about. And it's not them putting out a PR you know, release or anything like that saying like, hey, this is what we're doing. We usually find out from somebody else after they've helped this person. And they, their name came up recently regarding uh, a couple of rappers. I, well, a rapper named uh, Little, Little Uzi Verts. 
And he was thinking about, you know, tr- he was trying to get out of his contract from his old label. He was thinking about stopping creating music. And then Jay-Z's label, you know, stepped in like, hey, we're going to help you uh, get back into what you want to do. We're going to try to get your contract situation under control and just stuff like that. And it reminded me of a couple months ago when we had that situation with a young 11 year old guy who uh, the substitute teacher called the police on him because he didn't stand for the uh, national anthem or something like that. And Jay-Z sent, you know, well, Rock Nation sent a team of lawyers down there to kind of help get that case dismissed. And we found out about it after the fact, like they all there. And then the whole Khalif Browder situation mm-hmm. and then him being influential and helping put it out that documentary so that we don't forget about what happened to this young man because the system failed him. And he was in what Rikers for three years for a, a, a crime a that he was never even there. charged with, like bringing light, light to situations like mm-hmm. this. And it's one thing to talk about a situation or talk about, you know, activism. It's another thing to be about it and then put your money where your mouth is and not have to brag about it, not have to put a a press release about it. Just do what you feel is the right thing to do and then let that be it. And so I just, you know, I can't say enough how much I appreciate. And then I would have never even considered this to be Jay-Z, you know. Uh, I, I can't speak to you know his music growing up, but when I thought about Jay Z after hearing some of his music when I was growing up, I thought he was like the gangster, the guy that was you know selling the drugs. You know, uh, if if I found out that he had you know killed somebody or shot somebody, it wouldn't have been a surprise. But to do a whole one eighty degree change and then realize that what my people need more so than my music is my assistance. And for me to, you know, be a backbone and be a voice for them, for you know, for the voiceless right. and be a helpmate for the people who don't have it and just stand up for my people. When everybody's out here talking about Black Lives Matter and all of this other stuff, I'm not saying anything. I'm doing the work that to me makes the difference. And I totally appreciate that. That's a grown man. A grown man. That's a grown man. That's a man who has grown up. Yep. And, and not to say that he hasn't had his that. challenges. Yeah. You know, he's he's, he's going through. He's a grown man. We need more grown men. Yeah. And we are getting, you know, uh, especially in the hip hop community, going back to even 21 Savage. And we, you know, he was in the news recently because Ice picked him up, which is how we found out that he was from the UK. Right. Surprised the hell out of everybody. But even before then. He, he was in, you know, he was out there trying to let people know about financial literacy yep. and teaching, you know, starting a whole program because you look how many uh, athletes, look how many rappers are out here making all this money. And then the minute that they record uh, the contract gets, you know, ate up or whatever, they're not playing sports anymore. They're not doing they anything anymore. Nothing. Money is gone because they don't know anything about saving. They don't know anything about financial literacy. And so for this young man to come over here. And try to and, and be and about he's, that. He's a and he's, very young he's man. talking to like high school students. He's starting young yeah, yeah, he's because that's where you man. need that's where you need to focus your attention to. Because if in school they focus on this, in in college they focus on this. You wouldn't have these people going from college to professional sports and not knowing how to balance their uh, checkbook, not knowing how to save, not knowing how to do anything like that. Like it's it's some hip hop people out here that you would think. Are just about the the drugs, the the T. the hoes, and all of this stuff. But they are actually out here trying to change Snoop the Dog. game, and it's it's much appreciated. It's and amazing. I don't think we give them enough credit no, for not. what they're doing. Ice Cube, um, these are men who honestly started as boys, and they are grown men. So yes, shout out to them. Woohoo! Definitely. So yeah, I mean, shout out to them. Proud of them. We need more like it. Yeah. And we need more, not just rappers. We need, we need more we, black people. We need more black brothers, black men standing up, being men, looking out for the community. Yeah. And I want to see, I want to see teachers. I want to see janitors. I want to see people who cut lawns. I want to see people who pick up trash. It don't matter what you do. What yes. Walk and of life I, you have. What, what I, b- I believe that they're out there too. Educate. We, you know, we don't hear about it, but I believe that they are out there and I would like to know more about it. I, I remember seeing a story on Facebook, like, uh, within the past like two or three weeks about this, uh, I think it was a black church where they had like the young men of the community and they were just out in front of the church. They had all these cars broke down and they were teaching them about like working on cars, like teaching them trades. And I'm like, this, this is good stuff. 
Yeah, and I, it's stuff that you don't hear about too often. If anybody out there has anybody that they know, any friend, any family member, whatever, doing positive things, share it with us. Yes, we that's what Black Achievements and Excellence is about. It's not just about the celebrities. Uh, shout out to, uh, nah, was it Dark and Lovely Anita? I, 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 uh, I feel like that's I who it was so. we had to that nominated her, her, her cousin who just became a, a, a judge. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be, like I said, celebrities. It can be normal family members. If they're, if they're doing something positive, that's what we want to highlight because we want to normalize that. We want people right. to know that it, you don't have to be a celebrity in order to make a difference, in order to make a change, in order to touch someone's life. Like, you could be a regular, hey. regular, as Cardi B say, a regular, schmegular, degular person. <laughs> I, I don't know if we should be mentioning Cardi B because she ain't, you know, some fire right now. But but, but, but she, what she even said. For, even for that, she's still, she might be in fire and she'll be the first to tell you she's uneducated. But she's like, hey, I don't get this politics got thing, but something ain't right here. Right. She's calling crap out when she sees it and she's trying. She's trying to not only be a better person for herself, but for her daughter. And she's trying to share what she's learning. You know, we all learning together. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. We were not born with silver spoons in our mouth. We were not given proper educations. We were given the best educations that our parents could afford. But we were not given the things that, let's be real, we were not given the things that white people were given. Right. We just weren't. And so we learn it and we got to, if, if we as a community, as a culture, as a people start to stick together, we can go a, amazing places. That's, that's, a, that's the one thing that kind of bothers me a little bit because, uh, you know, we, we talk about sticking together and I'm not I'm not trying to throw the show off too much. We talk about sticking together. But one thing black people, I feel like we do is we are quick to condemn each other. Right. And I, I feel like we condemn each other to a fault at times to the point where we will cancel anybody for whatever reason. Right. And, and I understand I understand holding people accountable. But uh, uh, but then I feel like there should be some some moment of forgiveness there should be some moment of redemption there should be a, a, a teachable moment to where we realize where we went wrong and then we correct the direction versus right. like you know what i'm and you i'm preaching to the choir right now because i cancel gladys knight i cancel yeah, you cancel you cancel people <laughs> with you ain't the, preaching to with the choir the you are the choir and the preacher <laughs> so i mean but i understand you know uh where i'm wrong which is why you know i've been thinking about this the past couple of weeks because so much has been going on. Uh, but I, I just I realized that we are so quick. I, I know I am so quick we to throw to people stop. away is we and gotta instead of giving another. them an opportunity to correct, correct the situation. Well, And it's not. Unfortunately, I wish we could. Say, I wish I honestly wish we could say that we were the only people that do it. We we aren't. Um, look at what's going on, even in politics right now. The Democrats are on an apology tour. Everybody's apologizing for something. Amy Klobuchar is apologizing for eating with a comb. Um, is that what's wrong with eating with a comb? Her her um, intern didn't bring her utensils. She ate with the comb and then told her intern to clean up the comb. And I guess she wasn't too nice about it. Okay, so she's, so she's apologizing, apologizing for, for her that. attitude regarding. Yeah. It. Okay. Elizabeth I'm like, Warren if is if apologizing. If I gotta eat with my fingers, if I gotta, eat, <laughs> you know, what's, mm -hmm. it's a utensil. But go ahead. Elizabeth uh, Warren is apologizing for her. Uh, um, her um, Native American heritage. Uh, you know, everybody's apologizing for something. Uh, Kamala Harris is apologizing for what she did when she was PD or, uh, yeah, public, uh, she wasn't a public defender. No. DA, no. What was she? I, I don't she know. She was the head prosecutor in LA. Ca I yeah, California. Think of, yeah. I cannot remember. This is what uh, the when name she first announced her presidency, what everybody was bringing up. Right, right. Her, her, everybody's her apologizing for something. And, I think we need to stop first say, hold up, wait a minute, back up. We don't live in that time anymore. That's Things that's always changed. been your position. Right. <laughs> Things have changed. People made mistakes and people grow because half the time th what we apologizing for, you know, Biden, they want him to apologize for the Anita Hill thing. I understand wanting him to kind of answer to it so that we know he's not going to make the same set of mistakes. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we got to let it go. It happened 20 years ago. You cannot go back in time and erase what you did. But if you can be apologetic, and let's be real, he don't need to apologize to you and me 
for what he did to Anita Hill. Only person he needs to apologize to is Anita Hill. And when she's satisfied, hey, that's it. The rest of us don't need to worry about it. We just need to know that he's not going to make the same mistakes. And that's the way it is with everybody. You need to be held accountable for what you've done. You need to be remorseful. And we need to know that you're not going to make the same mistake and move on. I've made mistakes in my past. I know I have. I've made mistakes I would never share with you because of the way you cancel people. <laughs> um, but I've grown. I'm mm-hmm. t- 20, 30, I've, 40 I've years grown. have Even passed. Doing this show, I've I've grown. My my ideals, my, right. my thought process has grown, especially the way I used to you know talk about black women. <sighs> like I, I I used to say, you know, thank God for Jesus. Because the way I used to think, especially nowadays thinking back on the way I used to think, like I, I hate that I had those ideas. Well, and I, and I but hate. I've, I've I think grown. we when you grow, you look back and you say, "God, I hate that I did that. Why was I so stupid? Why mm-hmm. did I do that? Why did I feel that way?" I think everybody does when you truly grow. But we grow, and you, you know, you can't hold a twenty-year-old accountable or a fifty-year-old accountable for what they did when they were twenty if they're no longer doing it. Now, if they 50 and they still doing stupid stuff they was doing at 20 then knock yourself out hold them accountable cancel them whatever but if they not doing the same thing you gotta let it go you can't pull some hey this is what he did 30 years ago did he do it yesterday mm-hmm. if, if you, you know? don't if you don't recognize the change in their talk and if you don't recognize the change in right. their walk then uh, of course it. You know, call them to the carpet hold them to their feet to the fire because there's no evidence of the change Actions speak louder than words. You can sit up and you can apologize to me all day long. But if you still continue to do the same thing, your apology is crap. If you change your tune, your tune, your tone, your walk, your talk, everything about it, then I know that your apology was real. So I don't care about anybody apologizing. I want to see what they do differently. And that's why all of these little, all these Democrats apologizing and everybody, oh, I'm so sorry for what I did. I don't care is about it, your apology. Is it, is it wrong on. for me to be frustrated with even that? Because the fact I feel that they're apologizing? The, the fact that that's, that's what Democrats require of Democrats, to be apologetic. And Republicans, will, they require their people to be trash oh, from, uh, <laughs> for all the sense of purposes. Yeah, because they apologize and, and keep on doing the same they don't, stuff. They don't they, care. A lot of times they don't even require for you to apologize. They don't care. They will, they will cover up what you did. You know, or find a way to justify what you did or circumvent the backlash of what you did. And that's irritating to me. I don't I, I don't think we should be uh, requiring people to continuously apologize for the same old thing over and over and over again. I like we like did the Kevin with Kevin Hart. Hart. The Kevin Hart yeah, I, I yeah. don't think we need to do that. I think, you know, once we've asked for an apology, if that apology was given 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we need to, t- to take that apology into account with what they have done since have they changed are they better did they do they handle things better and if they do then we need to let it go and move on we do have to we've got to be better than republicans we can't i don't we can't it, be but them. it doesn't take much to be better right to, in but, my opinion it, it doesn't but, but we i feel have like to be we can't get mad at them if we turn around and do the same thing no i'm not saying so that because i gotta be better I, I, just the over I guess the over apologizing and, and the and let, constantly let's holding rephrase, people. Let's rephrase. Not Republicans, a group of Republicans, because not all Republicans feel that way. I, I, it's so hard to, to see the difference I, in this. this I know. Today, I know. But the age. reality is, this is a group of Republicans. It's honestly. I think not I can all call one that understands and that's Anna Navarro <laughs> she's like the one that I feel like understands no, the, the issue with Democrats she also understands the and calls out the issues she calls with her out party. BS she's yeah. just one she's one who will call out BS but let's be real we're not just talking to Republican p- politicians we're talking to everyday Joe Blows on the street and some of them may truly be Republicans and may feel like this this president, this administration does not really talk the same talk that they talk. Well, they don't with believe them not being the as vocal thing. as right. so, we are, which is why, I said, which is why I'm saying Republicans, we can't call out every Republican. We don't listen to every podcast. So let's not call out every Republican, but this set of Republicans, especially this set in Congress and in office that will not call out dirt. It's a special place in hell for them. That's all I can say. And I feel very comfortable saying that. Uh, 
your girl. You were talking about Stacey Abrams. I saw she was on yes. The View the other and day. And I'm telling you, right now, if she was running and we were at the polls, I'd be voting for her. Just from from her conversation, and I was trying was to it, was it the conversation on the view that you were referring to? Yes, because com- I didn't know the context. But her I, conversation on the I view. read uh, on Atlanta Black Star. They mm-hmm. were talking about her basically taking down uh, Megan McCain and, and the Abby, other girl Abby with Huffman. with class information, knowledge, and grace. She came back with statistics. Yeah, she basically said, "You are not going to take my narrative." And twist it to what you want it to be. And this is what Democrats need to do. We have got to stop allowing them to take our narrative. I mean, look at Obamacare and the um, the ACA. The same thing? Affordable Care Act? Yes, that, I'm just okay. trying to make sure I have the uh, acronym right. But yes, and the F- Affordable Care Act. Look at the two of them and how many people honestly didn't know that they were the same Thing. Mm-hmm. They because they demonized because Obamacare. <laughs> Republic, Republicans literally put Obama's name on it to make it look bad and they ran with it. They lied and they said it had all these negative things in it. Just like the Green New Deal, mm-hmm. they are running with it. I mean, they got Republicans are screaming and hollering, we saying that cows can't fart anymore. Are you kidding me? That is not true. And for anybody who wants to know, the Green New Deal is online. All you've got to do is type in full context of Green New Deal in Google and it will come up. And you can read the entire thing and know for yourself. So these are the things Democrats have got to do. They've got to stop allowing Republicans to put their spin. And not just spin. It's allowing Trump to put his name calling on your stuff. Because if he calls you a name for so long, everybody starts calling you that name. But if you don't say, whoa, 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 back up, that's not my name, and stand your ground. I'm not saying get down in the dirt with him and name call him too. All I'm saying is stand your ground and say, no, you are incorrect and correct him. And that's what she did. She corrected. Every time Megan or Abby came out with a, well, Democrats need to do this and why are Democrats doing that? She came back and she immediately took ownership. She took her narrative back and she came back with what the facts are. And she didn't come back with what the facts are from a Democratic point of view. She didn't come back with what the facts were for a black person's point of view or a woman's point of view. She came back with the facts for what an American's point of view is. That's what she did. And I just thought she was so amazing. So I'm right now I'm telling you if we was to vote and she was on my ballot, I'd be going to punch her name. Now she's not voting. I mean, right now she's she ain't not running. running. Yeah, yeah. So I can't put your name. I'm tempted to write it in, but I really need a Democrat to win. So I won't be doing that. And that's the second thing. We got a lot to choose from. We got a, a, a field full of people and there could be more coming. When we sit down and we go through our primaries and we pick whoever that is, I don't care if it's Jiminy Cricket. You better go in that booth and pick whoever that Democrat is. Otherwise, it's going to be four more years of this fool we got in the White House. And y'all can't think that's okay. You can't think this is okay. You cannot feel comfortable. You can't feel comfortable knowing your life is okay. If you're a sane, non-white supremacist uh, American, because... There are some people who believe he's doing a really good job. They support him to the fullest. He can do no wrong. And so for them, they would love because he still uh, his agenda is their agenda. You know, and he has the backing. I, I, I can't wait for Senate to flip. That's that's what I'm waiting on. But go ahead. I think part of why he's in there is because some Republicans were looking at big picture Supreme Court justices, things like that. Even at this point, even you all, you you can't look at that anymore. This can no longer be about a Republican agenda. It just can't. It has got to be about an American agenda. Mm -hmm. And he is not good for this country. Did you hear him talking about shutting down the southern border next week? That's how I feel. That's how I feel about him. (laughs) (laughs) I just can't. I can't no more. Okay. Can we let's move on? Okay. Uh, So a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, 
one, did you see the video I posted on uh, Facebook with uh, Trevor Noah? It was uh, his Between the Scenes yep. where he was talking about reparations. Mm -hmm. Okay, I bring it up reparations because I don't know about you all, but I'm looking at uh, these these candidates agendas and a lot of them are talking about reparations a lot right of them now. talking about reparations and y'all know how i feel about reparations i want my money okay i i want my money okay or should i say i want my great 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 grandma's money mm -hmm. put it that way i want it so i'm paying attention to a lot of things that they're saying a lot of them are coming out and talking to some, some interesting things um right now i and, wish Okay. I wish someone, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt, but I wish someone would have come out and put it to the public, even though he's talking to the public, this is on his show, but a candidate would have been able to articulate reparations as well as he did on his oh, show. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, that's what I appreciated. The fact that, you know, the, the guy was saying, uh, trying to equate it to well, and that's in industrialism. Go yeah. That's what I want to go into. Um, I'm I'm looking at reparations and I'm looking at everybody's policy. Some people are saying, yeah, we need reparations, but we just need to make sure you all have funding and banks. And OK, you didn't put in 50 million programs for black Americans and nine times out of 10 black Americans don't end up being able to use the programs. They don't know about the programs. White people use them and then the government takes them away. Don't give me another freaking program. I want my money. So anybody talking about giving me back my money, we're talking about. <laughs> so now on that between the, the scenes, like you were saying, there's a man and I'm assuming we can't tell because, yeah, of course, we, can't we don't see know. Him, yeah. But I'm assuming because of his question that this is a white man and he poses the question who should get reparations. Should it just be black people or should it be white people as well who are struggling because of the changes in technology? Right, machines taking over jobs, the industrialization. Yeah. Now Trevor Noah did handle it very well. Yes, excellent. I, I appreciated the fact that just like uh, on with Stacey Abrams on the View, the fact that he was knowledgeable, knowledgeable. and he hit him with the facts. Facts. He took back the narrative, mm -hmm. all of that. And if you haven't seen it, go to Keep It Moving Podcast Facebook page and look at it. It is very. He he said it very well. Mm -hmm. it just extremely well. But what gets me about it is not, well, one, the privilege that this man had to even be able to ask that question, to even be able to compare what he's going through right now to With 400 years of slavery. slavery. Yeah. And not 400 years of, I just got to cook and clean for you. I just got to pick your cotton. But 400 years of beatings, rape, identity, theft, culture theft separation separation yep. breeding mm -hmm. thrown into brothels and every other horror you could ever imagine happening to a person and then after that 400 years another 100 years of children being mistreated because of the color of their skin using babies as alligator bait mm -hmm. mistreating and not giving jobs and financial mm -hmm. money and loans and taken land from mm -hmm. and now to where we are now to where we still don't get the proper health care that our same white counterpart has to where we still don't get the education that our same white counterpart has so the fact that he even had the audacity and it's not audacity it's the privilege because he truly did not understand mm -hmm. the inequity in his question and and another reason I believe Trevor handed it with like grace was the fact that he didn't say that your issue is the non-issue. He's like, I understand what you're talking about. Right. It's just a separate, it's, it's a separate it's a thing. It's a separate issue you know, and it doesn't it, compare. It, right. And that's and not thing. saying that you haven't struggled. You, you, you may have been struggling. You I know, you it. may have your issues. He didn't diminish that. Didn't he just said that it's all. not the same thing and it's a different conversation. So now let's talk about that conversation right there. Technology. I don't know what everybody does for a living. I don't know how you make your money, but I can look at my job right now and I can tell you that the job I sit in right now can be replaced by a computer. Mm -hmm. I know this. I am 100% aware of this. Now, I got a college degree and I, my degree is not in what, you're what doing. I'm doing right. anyway. That's usually how it happens. Okay, but I do have a college degree. I can move to a different position. I'm already preparing to move to a different position. The reason I'm bringing this up is because this is where coal country failed. This is where they failed. 
They did not. They saw coal didn't just disappear overnight. It was decades before it was completely out of use. It was decades and not just decades before it was out of use, but decades of suffering because people get been getting black lung Mm -hmm. disease for a long time. It was decades of people getting sick. So now if you are a parent and you told your child to get into coal mining because yeah, it was good money, but you and maybe the it only job in the sale. area for right. right. And, you know. and I, I get it. But here is where you failed, unfortunately. And that's not me trying to talk down to right, you right. or anything. It is yeah. tr- me trying to get you to understand something. There was time. There was notice that this is coming. So everybody needs to look at the job they do. Can you see a computer being able to do your job successfully? The moment you can say yes to that question is the moment you need to start educating yourself into another field because it's coming. There's not going to be these Lines where these people putting together these cars for General Motors, Ford, all of that. These assembly lines are getting ready to be gone, people. Because even with the people being there, the robots are still there the as robots well, are there doing now. the majority of the work. Right. And it, it's just a slow shift. Everybody's screaming and hollering about cashiers getting taken out of grocery stores. By self-checkout. By self-checkout. It's happening. You cannot stop this. We know a lot of places don't even accept checks anymore. So the person who had to physically deal with that check and check, get that check into the bank and all of that, that position is slowly fading out. They're not, they don't just take these positions away overnight. They, it's, it's time. You see it over time when you can actually see your position starting to disappear. You know, oh, they don't need as many people anymore. Oh, they don't need this. Oh, they're starting to outsource this. Oh, well, they brought in a computer and it can do this. You need to start looking at your job differently. You either need to find a different position within the company and start trying to drive yourself that way because you have years to get there. Mm -hmm. Or you either need to find another company. But you have got to be the one to make the change in your life. Don't wait until the last minute to when they finally say, okay, everybody, I'm gone. And now here you are only educated in that specific job. You don't know anything else. You're going to be right where cold country is right now. And you won't have anybody but yourself to blame because you the had writing was on the wall. knowledge. Uh, yeah. Another thing is switching from uh, predominantly hardware to cloud-based systems. Right. So, I mean, we already see this happening and more and more companies uh, moving to cloud-based solutions. So the writing's on the wall. Right. Like, <laughs> learn where you things, code. Yeah, learn, things are going uh, start, to change. Start understanding technology. And that's another thing. In my search for the right candidate for president, I am looking for someone who either has knowledge or is smart enough to put someone in place who has knowledge of technology, which is why when I heard Beto O'Rourke used to be a hacker. Oh, you know, for a lot of people, that's a negative thing. For me, that's a beautiful thing. It means he understands. He knows what a cookie is. You ain't got uh-huh. to ask him and tell him twice. But not only that, he knows how to code. He knows he how knows to get about through firewalls. Getting, yeah, he knows security. about privacy. Yeah. He knows about all of these things that we need protection from because the average Joe may not know. Right. And we don't expect and you know who anybody. else doesn't know? Well, 45. Let's not even talk about him. <laughs> but we we don't expect you all to know everything. There's nobody who's going to be able to know everything. But once you start seeing things, you know, you know something. Everybody's got their own little intuition. When that hair stands up on your neck, something's not right. Here come this man. He putting this person in my job. Why is this person here? I can do this job better than him. Start knowing that yeah. it's time to start transitioning yourself. Because uh, cl- clearly you're on your way out. Yeah, it's coming. So just be prepared. That's just my advice. Right on. Now, the Mueller report. Mm-hmm. I, I wish I could say it was released. All I heard was a four-page summary from that bar guy that I don't trust. Right. I mean, and we knew we couldn't trust him from the beginning. Now, he did before he say, was even nominated. He did say that Mueller basically said no collusion. 
evidence of collusion. Okay. But Mueller did not say there no was obstruction. no obstruction. Mm-hmm. He basically threw that back to Congress. But this bar guy don't even want to give Congress a report. And now he says he's going to get a report, but it's going to be redacted. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. I'm sorry. I paid $25 million for that report. That was my money. Now, I, again, I didn't pay all $25 million, but, but I don't care if it was contributed. Two yeah, That was my money. I want to see it. I want to see for myself what Mueller had to say. And if he, if you don't let him do it, um, if you don't let me read his report, I want him to tell testify me. in front of Congress. Yeah, that's, that's all it is to it. I want to hear out of his mouth what he found because there is. So they really had a, a meeting with the Russians about ab- uh, adoption. No, we they already determined that that was a lie. Okay, so I, then so what I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. Did he even uh, interview Junior? Uh, again, like okay, that's know. why we need to report because we need to know what questions were asked, who he talked to, everybody that he talked to, not just the people that were convicted, but everybody he subpoenaed, and they actually did talk to him. And we it need was to like, know what sixty three indictments or something like that that came out of this. So you can't say there was nothing there, and a there lot of it attributed there. to conversations and uh, collusions with Russia, because everybody that had know. something to say with Russia about Russia lied about it. So you can't t- like it just doesn't make any sense. You can't you can't like logically if you if you got a brain, you can't logically say that there was absolutely no collusion or even in my opinion, you can't say there, there's no evidence because I feel like we had evidence before Mueller even stepped foot in the investigation. I feel like this. I'm glad to hear that the leader in chief of this country did not set up and make a deal with a foreign power to get in the office that I am very glad to hear that, but this does not absolve him to me because he's done too many other things that are unexplained. And until I get an exp- explanation for why he's doing them, you know, if it looked like a duck, act like a duck, it must be a duck. That's the way I feel. And I don't care. That's how I stand. So until I see the report, I'm not going to be happy. Or like I said, or hear it from Mueller's mouth. And, you know, uh, I guess the new narrative is that Democrats are all saying, let's wait for the Mueller report. And now, all of a sudden, because Mueller didn't find any collusion, they're saying they don't <laughs> trust but it. We still we don't haven't have seen the, report. the Mueller report. And that's one of the things I think Stacey Abrams brought out when right. she was talking on The View. She sure did. We still, you that, what, we saw a four-page summary, not the report. I paid $25 million. I didn't pay for $25 million for a summary. I will read the whole thing. I'm sure there are people who won't. There are people who don't want to. And that's on both sides. But I will read the whole thing. Give me the report. I don't care how long it is. I'll sit up with some popcorn and some a good, like a good book and some wine and go for it. Well, I ain't going to have no wine. But you, but you, you can. You can eat your, go for your, your grape juice. You know how you do. Hey. Sparkling. <laughs> got sugar in it. I'm off of it. All right, old. So, anywho. Uh, Jesse Smollett. I, it just for some reason it's like this is one situation that refuses to be clear <laughs> it it gets from the jump it's been confusion after confusion and it's still confusing now i've been trying to because of how i am with women who say they were touched raped or whatever and how i say you're not I don't just going not believe you, but yeah. I'm not going automatically. I've been trying to do that with everything. Everybody needs to have their day in court. Everybody needs to tell their side of the story. This is just like out the blue. I, what, what the hell is going on in Chicago? <laughs> That's not, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's like that's what everybody. One saying. minute everything is oh he, it he happened this, to him. They we got gone, the evidence we, of well, this no, and this. this. Is, oh, it happened to him. We are investigating. We're going to get down to the bottom of it. The next minute is it was his fault. He lied. Da 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 da. And he lied. They were so mad about his lies that they charged him for every single lie he told. Now who does that? <laughs> who does that? He is got that, a charge. Is that where the sixteen counts yes, came from? He got a charge for every single lie he told. Uh, who the hell does that? They don't do that to a murderer. They don't give him a charge for every lie he told when he murdered somebody. Well, that should have been fishy right there, though, too, right? Right, and that okay. was fishy. When they came out and said 16 counts, I said, for what? 
And when I heard it was for each lie, I'm like, oh, hell no, I'm done. And so now that's what made me done with the Chicago P- Police Department. Uh, and then I start hearing, of course, all the crap, that all the collusion in, in the Chicago P- PD itself. So I'm just like, okay. Well, with the now, most recent thing being the Laquan McDonald situation. Right. Yeah. So it's like now I don't know what to believe. And he still, his story has been straight all the way through. I am not lying. Why would I tell this lie? But his story kind of no, sounds the story, funny. It's but the like, story is, is, is fishy Right, it is fishy. But, but also, that, see, that's what my thing has been. His story is fishy. But if there was somebody that was coming against you and all you had was two brothers to say this is what happened, and all of a sudden, because other people want to believe it and your story was fishy, then now their their story, their narrative becomes the truth and everybody runs with it. Right. And but I he can, I'm saying he can them. still be getting set up right. and in the court of public opinion, give him the chair. Like everybody right, has that convicted right there, him. That right there is why the court of public opinion does not matter when it comes to the law, thank God, and why we as the court of public opinion need to pay attention to who we're writing off and canceling that that right there says it all because we don't know what happened here all we of still, this sound fishy. we still don't know what <laughs> it's, he sound fishy the pd sound fishy them little two nigerian boys sound fishy everybody sound fishy to me i, I i'm writing them all off right now <laughs> but and, like, and then the but hell? but as a like a lawyer or as a prosecutor because of how much how public this situation really? is and, and then you got the, fishy. the and then you got the 45 or the president of the united oh, states coming out intervening he always gonna intervene on something but, uh, he think he but, can talk about i'm saying but as far as trying to try this case he need can to you can anybody have a fair trial in a situation oh, like no. this there is no fair trial in this case anymore no but i mean even look at the lawyers the nigerian lawyers they look stupid I mean, I mean, she she sounds stupid. I I don't know who this woman is. I don't know if this is her first case. I'm assuming she's probably um, a public attorney, uh, one Defender. of the public defenders, because she cannot. Why did they need together. a lawyer? Because they were the ones being accused. They had to have a well, lawyer. Well, you know, they let them. They let them go. Uh, no well, charges. This nothing. This woman is still talking. Okay. She's still on TV. I don't understand. She sound like. She sound like she has never spoken in front of a crowd before. She keeps stum- stammering through her sentences and she can't string a sh- just nothing together. Nothing. So her, I'm like, okay, you don't sound like a good lawyer. So I don't know what's going on over here. And then his lawyer going to talk about them wearing white face. I'm like, oh, come on, white lady, please don't. She, Because she talks about how Jussie said they may have worn white makeup under their masks and that's why he thought he saw white skin. Uh-huh. Um, and she shows a picture of one of them who was uh, portraying the Joker and he had white makeup all over. Okay, but first of all, you can still tell he was black. Um, but did he have a mask on at the time? It was not around his eyes. Oh, okay. So that um, wasn't a good example. <laughs> it was like a terrible <laughs> example. And, and and she's like, so they were wearing white face. I'm like, come on now. We we got a problem with people wearing black face. And you gonna bring this in here. This don't belong in this argument. This gonna start some other stuff that don't have nothing to do with this. So that, that didn't even need to be said. And he still could have thought he saw somebody who was white. It was dark at, at night. He, he could have just been scared. He could have mm-hmm. saw his finger and thought it was their eyes. He could have been scared. I mean, I'd have come up with a more logical excuse than that piece of crap she gave. I mean, the lawyers are crazy in this, the, the the police department, the mayor, you can see all the emotion coming up out of them. And I'm like, why are y'all crying and screaming and hollering? Because he wasted money. Y'all waste money every single solitary day. Yeah. And a lot what? of times with covering up, right? Somebody else's crap. So Come on now, this is not right. And then, of course, on every show you go on to, people asking to the public. One guy said, hey, why shouldn't they get away? I think he did it, but I'm glad he got away with it. They get away with stuff all the time. I'm like, <laughs> come on, two wrongs don't make a right. But I don't know. I'm just. That's that's the crazy part. I we've been bed, through 16 we, counts. How, how long we've been going through this? Two weeks. <laughs> and it felt and like still, two it's, years. It's, I'm about to say, it seemed like it was longer than that. And we still don't know what the hell we don't happened. We know what happened. And they just dropped the charges. We don't know what happened. Sealed. But, sealed. And, it. Right. It sealed <laughs> them after that. So, and then he says there was no deal. They screaming, yes, there was a deal. 
and he's they said something about um the deal was he forfeited his bond bond mm-hmm. and he I had already he, his community service that he had done was already you know enough uh, was enough and that was part of the deal and it's like but he says he didn't do community service he says this is something I would have done anyway had to be there so it's like <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like he don't even know what's going on <laughs> i don't know what's going on i'm just like okay and so everybody here's the thing everybody keeps saying is this going in his career let me explain something to you every single solitary one of you people out there in two weeks we will be on to somebody else's craziness we will have forgotten about this mess unfortunately 45 will probably still be involved and the, and no, I'm that, saying and whatever the next thing is, right? He's uh, he's still gonna be a part of. We, we just whatever we let him do his thing, but in two weeks this story will have died down and become nothing. Once that and and I'm not saying in two weeks from today. I'm saying in two weeks from the last little bit of information we get, the story will die down. People will be on to something else. By the time Empire comes back for the new season, it's back. Everybody, no, new season. Oh, new season. Okay. Everybody will have forgotten about this. Come what's that? September, October of this year. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I still don't see Empire coming back. Now, Empire might not come back because Empire's ratings have been slipping. Yeah. I don't think it has absolutely it has anything nothing to do. With to do. This. If anything, this would have been an opportunity for them to try. Right, they should have been trying to gain their ratings from this. But no, Empire's ratings have been slipping. Yeah. So if the, I haven't even watched it since season, it came back, I've been watching it. It's pretty good. But okay. I mean, if it comes back, who's in the casket? We don't know yet, man. Still, see, I see. That's why the ratings is going down. They started. <laughs> they started this season all kind of wrong. But even still, um, if Empire didn't come back. He is going to be fine. His career will be there because people love his music. People will continue to watch. Everybody's confused. Nobody knows what's going on. So you can't say he, so, like, for a fact he did it or he didn't do it. And, let's and he's be still real. trying to keep up with his activism. Let's be real. Laura Ingram said, nigga, nigga, nigga on the air. And she's back on air. Um, there's that one guy who, um, and forgive me because I do not know his name, but he called the little, uh, little black track black black track star little female track star or either she was a basketball player one of them called her a hoe uh don imus the nappy head hole there you go okay he's back on air. yeah he was talking about so, the whole basketball team yeah so but it, he, he he left for like a yeah, long he left, time yeah and he comes back mm-hmm. this is this a career ender absolutely not because and this is the bottom line people's attention spans are short and, and they get caught up in the next big thing. And they're shorter these days because every day is another big thing. Right. Every day with this fool we got in the White House is And just thing. with uh, how advanced and how fast social media is and how quickly we get information, right. it, like it's the, it could be like, the next hour is the next big thing. So, yeah, he'll be just fine. Just give it. And, it, I mean, it may even be like – Empire don't come back a year or two, let things die down, and then boom, here he comes. All he got to do is put out a good music album, put out a good <laughs> show, and psh, everybody will eat it up. So I'm not concerned. Not for his career. I-, I would like to know what happened, but I guarantee you, they sealed that file. We will never know. And that makes it even more crazy. Why was it sealed? Yeah, uh, like, again. What? It, it don't make any sense. I feel like, you know what? It, it don't even matter. So I want to end the show with something a little different. Okay. I got a question. You know, one of those, you you ever watched the Arsenio Hall show? Uh, it was it's so long ago. Like, okay. Well, he had a I know segment who he of is. things that make you go, hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, here's something that I just want to post to everybody. Because this, I've been pondering this and saying, hmm, a lot to it. So, um, you know, uh, prisoners inmates when they're in jail they some of them work for Mm -hmm. other companies and they produce things like walmart had a brand that used nothing but prisoners at one time to make the uh, make their product okay now they no longer do that walmart said they stopped that but um there are still companies that use prisoners to make their products prison labor yep um this is all i want to know if you got prisoners making your product while they in jail. That seemed like slave labor to me, but go Hold ahead. On. And all they need is three meals and a cot. 
and a cold silver toilet seat. Why is it that I am still paying taxes for prisons? I want to know why the American people pay taxes for private prisons who take their prisoners and use them as slave labor. And why is it not those companies that are paying for their room and board and food? Mm. That's what I want to know. That's my question. That's actually a good it. one. Mull it over. If anybody can come up with an answer that is legitimately that makes sense not well I think we all know to be the truth they just taking our money and they just making them you point is why are we paying taxes I feel like this is a conversation that we need to pose to Congress and it may be because it, we, it we know that they are I'm, I'm sure somebody's getting paid I'm somebody's sure people are paid. still voting for the fact that private prisons are still prevalent money and going somewhere. I'll, remember, remember we just heard about a judge that got what 27 years in prison for basically selling black folk black into children the into system. the prison system the uh, yep. sc- uh what school to prison pipeline or something like yep. that they called it yep and i guarantee you there are more judges out there doing this because they're making a pretty penny in order so, to keep those and then the fact that and you, we are still uh, a paying county, taxes a county has to have the jails like a certain percentage full we are paying tax. That's my question. I, and I guess I'm posing it to the audience and, and the listeners because I really want everybody to really see what I'm seeing and pose that to your congressman. And uh, Make, th- 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 These are the things that I'm having a problem with. Yeah. And I think I'll probably bring one to you at the end of every show. Why is it? And see if we can't start all trying to see things a different way. Right. For those of you who aren't too familiar with the prison system or kind of where we're coming from, there is a, a nice documentary on Netflix. I think it's called uh, 13 or the 13th, something like that. But it's talking about the 13th Amendment and how slavery basically transformed into prison. And it actually did. And so and it, it's a very good documentary. It gives you a lot of information. And then if you watch that and then come back and, and listen to Novelty's question. It will really make more sense to you. So I, I would recommend everybody do that if you haven't seen it. Yeah. So and my question is simply, why are we still paying taxes if our inmates are being used or, or, or not being used? If our inmates have jobs with companies making their equipment, why are we paying taxes to cover their room and board? Anywho. So I don't want to call it a thing that make you go hmm moment. I want to call it a thing yeah, that piss you off moment. Yeah, we ain't trying to get sued. Either. No, yeah, <laughs> I, just, I just want you. I really want you to start thinking about some things differently, and then start. Um, it's what two years, a little under two years now before we start voting. Start looking at these candidates, listening to what they have to say. Don't take my opinion for it for, because I'm telling you, I got a list, and, and my list might not match up with yours. Now reparations is number one on my list mm-hmm. um but i, I also want to know what they're going to do with health care i want to know where they stand on education i want to know where they stand on making adjustments to the um, um the constitution about the electoral college about term limits for not only senators but supreme court judges yeah separating completely separating the um judicial end of the um of the the law to from the presidential and the con- congressional it's time for we vote for people in congress we vote for president we should be voting for who's in the supreme court and who is head of the justice department because the, if this this investigation hasn't taught us anything it's that the president should never be able to interfere in his own investigation ever it shouldn't be possible. Granted, the president should probably never be under investigation. But as we can see, sometimes the president does something so dirty or so shady that he has to be, he or she has to be. So we got to know that that judiciary branch is not 
in any way controlled by the executive branch, just like Congress is not controlled by the executive branch. We got to separate these things. So these are things on my agenda. They may not be on your agenda. So you got to look out for what's important to you and your family and then what's important and what's good for the country as a whole. Right on. I'm done. Because I'm telling you right now, the congressional or legislative branch, the judicial branch and the executive branch aren't looking too good. None of them. None of them. And they allowed one branch, the executive branch, to basically diminish the credibility of the others. And that's a problem. And you would think that those other branches would try to rectify that situation. Right. I feel like the House uh, no, House of Representatives is trying right now. Right. And you that's know. only because power changed. Yeah, power shifted. But yeah. if if Republicans were still in control, they it wouldn't would be, be doing nothing. anything. No investigations. No, just go go with the flow. While the rest of America suffers. And we all know, I mean, it's, you can look at this and see something's not right. And it's not to say that he's necessarily done anything illegal. We don't know. That's the problem. We don't know. Right. So the, we need separation. You know, we got separation of church and state. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> you know, we, we used to, to have separation. Uh, but even that has started to but shift. That started to shift. It has. And that's another problem. And it started, in my opinion, with this administration. Yeah, so I, I got a lot of questions. You know, I'm looking at the prison system. I, I'm looking at um, just just the Green New Deal. I'm looking at a lot of different things and looking at what a lot of different people are saying. And it's a lot of people and a lot of different ideas. If you haven't heard of Andrew Yang, check him out. He's got a, he's got a platform. If you haven't heard of um, Buttigieg, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. I did not know how to say that name. Judge. I thought it was, <laughs> I, I, I thought booty juice. Like, I'm like, it just, it just it, the first word looked like booty to me. It was like the first pronunciation. Was, right. I'm like, this is, this is not real, but. Well, he said, call him Mayor Pete. Okay. But um, yeah, t- check him out. He's got a lot to say. These candidates are here. Um, uh, If you don't know about the candidates, one place I you can definitely yeah, go yeah. to hear. That, I was just about, about to say, where, where can people go? Candidate. Well, no, one uh, other than trying to look them up online and see who all they, who they all are and look for their websites. Um, I have been listening to the breakfast club in the morning mm-hmm. when I work out and I just listen to their podcast on iHeartRadio, and they're interviewing a lot of them. So this is where I'm hearing their platforms from between that and the view. And then on CNN, sometimes if um, I'm thinking about it, I can catch a town hall. Um, that's where I saw a, uh, Kamala Harris's town hall so there's a lot of different places they they just hidden every talk show and every you know anything they can to kind of talk about where they stand and you educate yourself if you catch you can listen to all of the breakfast clubs podcast just go to iHeartRadio and type in the breakfast club and you can go through and listen to them and um they're I think I've heard maybe four or five different candidates on there already um bernie sanders was on there um uh cory booker was on there Mm -hmm. kamala harris yeah that caused a little controversy Uh, Uh, but also you guys are getting or voting for a new mayor mayor this year yes uh Uh, and something that i heard or i thought was different because i don't listen to the radio too often but 103 which is the local basically hip-hop radio station Mm -hmm. was having like a a couple times throughout the day for a week, they were talking to the different mayor, mayoral candidates. And I'm like, this, this I is awesome. <laughs> you I really know? Needed and to it was, that. I think it was last week where they were, you know, asking them questions about different things. And I just, I never heard them do that. And maybe they took a page out of a uh, breakfast club, you, you know, to kind of talk well, to, you haven't heard them do that because it's been a long time since they've had their own morning show. Oh, okay. They had somebody else's morning show. So oh, now so it's syndicated. Have, yeah, now they have a local morning show again, okay. so they can do that. Right on. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to know that. I will call a f- in a few favors and pull those interviews because I have no idea who I'm voting for. I just know I'm supposed to vote Tuesday, and I'm like, Ooh. and it's it's quite a few people. It's like maybe six yeah. or seven people. It's, it's a few people mm-hmm. there, and and even with them, I'm looking when I again, I'm looking at somebody who is going to make change to the system that we already have in place i'm looking for somebody who wants to do something different but also 
understands technology. They got to understand it here on this level too. They got to understand education here on this level as well. They got to understand healthcare problems here on this level as well. Because if they make changes here, we don't necessarily need to lean on the government to make so many, the federal government to make so many changes. If we can start making them on the local level. So the same things you're looking for in a president are some or need to be the baseline of the same things you're looking for in a mayoral candidate as well. So, and we vote Tuesday. So I got my work cut out for me this weekend. Cause I'm like, uh, one of them I know personally. And then the rest of them, I'm just like, and the one that I know personally, I'm like, I know you personally and your work ethic. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, here we go. See what we can do. I'm not as impressed with any of these candidates as I have been in the last few years. Um, I think one of the best mayors the city has had is Cleaver. Cleaver. Um, phenomenal mayor um, to me. Is he still uh, in Congress now? Yes. Okay. Um, but uh, Sly James wasn't too shabby. He wasn't too shabby. Now, it's been some, like that Kay Barnes who put them weird things downtown. I, I didn't like her. What is the weird thing? You know, the four pillars with the... The, the styres. Is that what they call? Uh-huh. I don't know what they call. All I know is the day I saw them putting those things, the dropping those things on the pole when they first got them. And I just, what the How shit? long ago was this? This was years ago. I, okay. I couldn't tell you how long I thought it was ago. a staple of Kansas City. I thought it had been here for a while. Yeah. Ooh, it wasn't here when I was in high school. I'm thinking I was in college because I was on the city bus. Okay. So I'm thinking I was in college when they started lower, lowering them. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? And when they was finished, I was like, who put that ugly mess down there? We got more, <laughs> we got more problems, more potholes. I mean, because we've been having potholes forever. More streets that need to be fixed, more houses that's run down. And this is what y'all spent money on? What is it's this? One, it's, it has become one of the things well, I know right. about Kansas City. And it is. You know. It has now become one of the things that makes our It's like a staple, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's how you know Kansas City. Seeing that and then the Power and Light Company, mm-hmm. um, which it no longer changes colors. I'm like, how y'all gonna not st- how y'all gonna stop it from changing colors and put that crap up? I was just, uh So, anywho. Yeah, let's not... uh Put me on another tangent. No, no rant, no another <laughs> tangent. And let's not be too long-winded. Cause... But anyway, <laughs> so, but yeah, um, just, here we go. That's all I can say is here we go. Yeah. And research your candidates. Research, research the candidates. Every last one of them. Know, know what you're doing. Know what you're voting for. Know, but you have to know what your agenda is, too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Charlemagne the guy says he's looking for anybody with a black agenda. And if you don't have a black agenda, he's not interested in you. I can understand that. I'm looking for someone who has a black agenda as well as other agendas. I'm not looking for it solely a black agenda, but yeah, they got to have something on their agenda for reparations. Got to. And and I'm just looking for somebody who's ready to start saying, okay, it's time to make the playing field even, not just for black people, but for people of color, period. You know, um, Indian Americans or um, Native Americans, or I don't know what, I, I, they want to be called by their tribe, but there's so many tribes out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and I know that's disrespectful, and I do apologize. But like Mike is trying to rush me, so I can't call y'all you all each out. Plus, I don't know all of them, but um, they're they're still treated crappily in this country, and this is their country. You know, it, we got to do better. I need, I want somebody who sees. We done screwed up. No, no, no. Let me rephrase. We done fucked up and we need to make things right. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect the F-bomb, but right on, well, you you made feeling. your statement. I right need on. to make my point clear. So, anywho, got anything else? I, I do not. All right. Well, we will see y'all in a couple of weeks. Peace.